Hey, hey Aquarius, Intuitive Soul Coach here with your quarterly reading for October, November, and December. Welcome back to my channel if you're returning and welcome if you're new. If you're interested in a personal reading, signing up for the monthly newsletter, or entering into the free reading giveaway, you can find all of that information in the description box below the video. All right, welcome. Now, I am getting a message here about this eclipse season, which begins in September and rolls into October, could be very significant for you. Now, you do have here, bottom of the deck, Aquarius, you have come to the edge. So you're on the brink here. You're on the precipice of massive change, massive transformation is what I'm picking up on. Some of you may be 36 years old, you may be 31, 50, or born on the 8th, but I feel like you've been preparing for change, and this eclipse season could actually be the catalyst for launching a new beginning, a new idea, a new love, a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new path moving forward as you as you enter into 2025. I feel like you got a little bit of a head start because there's something shifting for you now, but you may see the full blooming of it in 2025. So let's dive in. Your first card out for October is No Place Like Home. There's a sense of change amongst your stability. Some of you could even be moving in October. This may be a new job that affects your stability here in some way, shape, or form, or just a sense of belonging, coming back home to oneself, because eclipses can bring about hidden things to the surface, subconscious energies even, it can bring out truths, and you're ready to, you're ready to clean the cobwebs is what I'm getting, and no pun intended with October being Halloween month, but I feel like you're, you've are you been clearing out the cobwebs and it's like you're reaching in, grabbing the last of them and you are ready to start fresh. And that is representing the first card coming out is a start of a new life, Ace of Pentacles here. The Ace of Pentacles is a positive reward for your hard work because some of you really have been cleaning house in your personal life, in your professional life. You have been doing the work. I also see something with perhaps education, but I feel like that there's going to be a completion here potentially around December, but we can talk about that here in a moment. Now you have the Knight of Cups and you have the Sun. Some of you Aquarians could be opening up to, <clears throat> excuse me, a union, a love union even, that brings you a lot of happiness. And this is uh, the beginning stages of maybe a long, fulfilling life with an individual. There could be marriage here. There could be uh, the news of a birth. This could also be a love project that you are creating. Ace of Pentacles can be career-wise as well. So something that you are really loving and it's fulfilling you on an emotional level. The Knight of Cups is taking action. And I feel like there is a sense of emotional depth as you manifest your your goals or your dreams or your you know aspirations into reality because this is the form of reality with this ace of pentacles and it's so interesting because it is represented by the slippers right by the silver slippers or the ruby red slippers and the wizard of oz and what does she say when she taps those slippers together she says there's no place like home now these are two completely different decks by two completely different creators and i feel like some of you you're, you're going home, right? Mama, I'm coming home. So some of you, you're coming back home to yourself. You could feel more, more stable in a situation here or just feel more loved. You may feel like you belong. Yeah, I'm getting belonging has been so significant in your life. Maybe some of you didn't feel like you had that sense of home or that sense of belonging because it's been a long journey right? It's been a long journey and you, you missed parts of yourself. And 
with the sun card here, it's the most abundant energy in the deck, right? It is about happiness and abundance and vitality. Some of you have a fresh start when it comes to your health, right? You could be taking care of your heart. I'm getting heart health, which could include you know, finding ways to reduce stress. It can be getting out in the sun or feeling warmth, okay? Feeling more warmth with the people that you surround yourself with, the relationships that you intertwine with, as well as what you do for a living. All of it makes up your life. And whatever this new direction is that's coming in, it's emotionally fulfilling. And it has, you know, I feel like a really happy energy, to it here so let's take a look at the overall outcome for the month of october 2024 for aquarius all right you have a few cards that came out we'll look at them all i do feel like this is going to be a big month for you it could even be a turning point a justice libra and energy here if you're dealing with any legal situations, maybe you work in the, the justice system, or perhaps it feels like things have felt a little bit imbalanced, there is a reset of the karmic scales here. And what that means is you've completed something that was major in your life. I haven't even looked at any of the path or any of the cards yet that are coming after this because I feel like justice is the big energy, but it's like you are coming face to face with a situation once and for all that allows you to, you know, come back home in some way, shape or form. Queen of Swords, more Libra energy, King of Swords, the Magician. Wow. King of Swords and Queen of Swords, there's an imbalance because one of them's in reverse here. So for those of you that felt like there was a communication barrier or there was, I mean, this can be a divorce. Some of you are going through a divorce. Some of you, you're finally starting a new life. I mean, King and Queen of Swords, sometimes they are so rigid or so stuck in their ways when one of them is in the reverse, right? This could be you or a partner that you were with i feel like there's justice between the both of you some of you are definitely exiting out of a manipulative cycle maybe this is physically closed out for you a while ago but it's taken till now for you to emotionally detach because a lot of times those things don't go hand in hand we can we can physically attach from a situation or detach, excuse me, but emotionally or spiritually, there's still a cord and that can take weeks, months, and even years. And I just feel like you've, you've finished a karmic cycle between you and some sort of partnership or individual here. Yeah, something was a little bit challenging with the, the magician in reverse manipulation or you just felt like something was manipulated in some way, shape or form. They may have said the same thing about you. Uh, I feel like you're cutting that energy off, though. You're saying, you know, off with the head as the Queen of Swords is known for sometimes just, you know, cutting it out. Now, someone could have red hair. Um, you could have a King of Swords represented by the giant gnat here. I mean, this person could really bother you or they really get under your skin in some way or they're pesky. But I mean, there's a rebalancing showing up and I feel like the magician is also you turning things around in your life. You are remembering who you are. Okay, we have Libra and Gemini energy out here, which are your two fellow and you. I mean, this is you, Aquarian energy. So I feel like you are remembering your power you're remembering your magic and you are coming home to yourself here coming home to a situation that it felt very imbalanced okay very imbalanced but the magician is the new beginning is the fresh start it is the first card of the major you know arcana aside from zero but the zero is you know, the soul self, the potential, the seed, and the magician is the action behind it. So I feel like there is action in the month of October to bring more happiness and balance into your life, Aquarius, wherever that has felt a little bit one-sided. So here we go into <clears throat> Scorpio season and the month of November. Okay, so Scorpio and Sag, uh, this is... A powerful month. It's it's definitely going to be a big month for 
for the world, uh, especially the United States, but it's a card eight and eight is about power. Eight is about authority, strength, materialism, control. It can be things happening quite quickly, but it's also the symbol of infinity, right? So I feel like there is an infinite uh, abundance of support here. And the card is the tribe, right? So it almost feels like you know, there's no place like home. Some of you are reconnecting with people who feel like home, okay? Or you may even be receiving messages or spirit communication from loved ones who've crossed over who may have been like home. Could be a parent, could be a sibling. I'm also getting with the tribe, you are supported here. And there's something with a mother and a child. You see the giraffe here and the baby giraffe and or maybe even a father and a child. And I see change brewing, changes in the air. You see the leaves falling. So this does represent, you know, finding that place of, of home and security within oneself and within the world around you. So let's see what, what November has in store for you, Aquarius. All right, wow. Okay, we have the Six of Wands in the upright. This is wonderful. Six of Wands is accomplishment, it's victory, it's reward, but it, it feels like it's been a bit of a struggle to get to this point, but you're, you're finally reaching this pivotal point in your journey because the King of Wands is showing up here in reverse and so is the Page of Wands. <clears throat> there may have been some communication that a King of Wands did not like to hear, okay? Or perhaps, you know, it, it almost feels like a truth that needed to be had with this page of swords. Uh, it almost feels like someone may thought they, they were a king, but maybe they were really a page here. I mean, yes, this, um, this king of wands and page of swords, it's, it's about not having all the information or not having the knowledge. I almost feel like this king of wands in reverse is keeping some sort of knowledge from you and that's why you have this tribe coming in here okay so it's like people are in your corner in some way shape or form but I feel like this king of wands is upset and they may be withholding something from you but regardless of what that is and we can peek at that I feel like the outcome will be in your favor okay it may actually help you that this individual is holding back or not giving you all the information because I don't like their energy in reverse anyway. King of Wands in reverse is someone who's very dominant, stubborn, inflexible, bossy, manipulative, narcissistic, and they have a better than attitude. I'm better than you or better than whatever, right? And Page of Swords in reverse is very bratty. It can be um, spying, gossiping, challenging news, or just feeling immature. Someone may be acting immature because you are coming home and maybe they want you to stay at a level that they're at and you're like, uh-uh, that doesn't feel like home to me. That doesn't feel good. I need to go where, you know, I feel emotionally, physically, spiritually connected, aligned, loved, and nurtured, or I need to do those things for myself. And if you're not willing to, to meet me there, then I got to do this. So six of wands, six of wands is leadership, right? Six of wands is achievement, could be fame for some of you or being put in the public eye. Yeah, for those of you that work in the public eye or maybe social media or you have, you know, a job that a lot of people look up to you in some way, shape or form or you're about to have that job if you don't already with the Ace of Pentacles, a job that makes you really happy, someone could be very upset in your success. Okay, I'm just going to say that here. Someone is very upset with your success and they may even spread some sort of lie, some sort of rumor that's not true, but it actually shows this person's character and whomever they are spreading that to, it actually looks really bad on this person's name. So I feel like, again, it's not, you're going to be unscathed by this energy, but I do have to mention it because it's showing up here. But let's take a look at the overall outcome for November 2024. All right, what do we have for Aquarius? Temperance. Temperance is the card of patience. 
It is represented by Auntie M in her garden in the Wizard of Oz, you know, good old Aunt M. She's the nurturer and the mother and she's loving and kind and patient and she's watering her garden here. And I feel like you are taking the steps to water your own garden, tender love and care, right? Finding balance, self-control and moderating as well. Some of you things may have felt a bit out of control, crazy, temperamental, or maybe you became a little bit overprotective with this mother bear energy or mother giraffe, I should say, or father giraffe. Some of you, if you're a single parent here, I feel like protection could be something you're balancing out. I also see in terms of parenting for some of you, you may have struggled with a child and you may have let controlling tendencies affect affect the relationship in some way shape or form and that may be why justice is coming in saying you've both learned a lot and it's time to rebalance the karmic scales for there to be some sort of you know success success is what i hear but i do feel like a child or children will be very happy with the patience the development or the growth that is coming in here because you see the Six of Wands is re represented by Munchkin land, Munchkin country. You see all the little Munchkins there. And I feel like they're all happy. They're all smiling. You know, the Wicked Witch has come in and saved them in some way, shape, or form. So whatever evil had been brewing or whatever challenge or struggles or trials or tribulations, you may be reaching a point where you're really overcoming them. And a lot of people are happy about this, uh, not just yourself. Okay, so trust that as a big theme here. All right, let's look at December. Now this could be where the education shows up. We have the Y card and it's card 31. Three and one in itself, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Three is about creativity, harmony, union. It's hitting that next tier. And then we have the one. So it is about new beginnings. And when you add three and one together, it equals four, which is about structure. So you may feel like you're going back and learning something new after you've already completed it, right? But you, because you've done something again. So whatever this new beginning is that you're doing, you've already done that before in your life. But this time around, you have more knowledge, you have more skill, you have more wisdom. I feel like this month you're asking some big questions. Because you want to complete things before you move into the new year or you want to feel like you are, you know, not leaving any stones unturned. It's also card 31 and there's 31 days in December and I feel like you're, you're going to use all of the days this month to really learn about a situation, maybe take some classes. Yes, this can be a big month for travel, for holiday gatherings, for community and family. I feel like you're doing some sort of research here and this could be looking into bits and pieces of yourself. So if you are the one asking the why, you're finding answers before the end of the month, okay? So let's clarify why is the why showing up in December for Aquarius? seven of swords because someone this could be when when something comes out or when you find out about something remember i said in november there is some sort of secret or gossip or something that yeah it just doesn't feel good with that king of wands we have the seven of swords and you may be wondering you know why what's wrong with i mean this could be something global as well i am picking that up it could be global just to put that out there but it could also be that you know someone in your life has deceived you or they've lied about you or they tried to slander you in some way shape or form and you're like what is going on here because there could be some sort of documentation and the reason why i'm going to tell you right now with the seven of swords the reason why people are dishonest is because they have a fear or a desired outcome. One of those two, probably together, a fear or a desired outcome that they want to achieve and they're willing to manipulate, lie, hurt others, betray in order to get that desired outcome. That's 
that's the the question here of you know why did that person do that that's why and it can be very selfish seven of swords is a selfish energy it is someone who you know hides their motives it's unethical it's it's cunning right it's betrayal but it's illusion as well and i feel like you may be separating yourself from that energy okay thank you uh eight of swords uh the star wow okay now i see here the hermit yeah you're separating yourself from that energy first and foremost because you're wondering you're wondering I feel like you're digging in, asking questions, but you're going within as well. And you're seeing that someone else's projections are not a reflection of you. And so often we're taught, you know, or it's part of a belief that, and it's true, yes, our outer world is going to be a reflection of our inner world, but I feel like you've done the work and it's within the separation here, this rebalancing that someone doesn't like it because it's throwing the scales off for someone else and their reactions are not a reflection of you. So I want you to know that here right now, that someone's behavior is not a reflection of you. They just do not like that you're no longer on the same page as them or, you know, allowing that energy to coexist between the both of you, but it's not even coexisting. I feel like it may have been miserable and you want happiness and someone doesn't like to see that, right? Someone doesn't like to see that, but the hermit here is... Uh, possibly someone feeling very lonely, very abandoned, very rejected, and they could be acting out in betrayal. And I feel like you've learned enough this time around to deal with it in you know, a healthy way and to disconnect from the energy instead of feeding into the energy. Because when you feed into it, right, it can grow and it can combust and it's just, it's not good. So that's why we see Glinda, the good witch coming in here. When does Glinda co come in? And the Wizard of Oz, right? When when the Munchkin Land needs her, when Dorothy needs her. This is our higher power. This is our healing. It's it brings us hope and inspiration. This is your energy, Aquarius. It is a wish being granted here, and the wish is of a brighter future, right? Some of you, this person they may be upset that they can't have you or they can't have your job or they can't have something that you have access to. And I just feel like you are protected. But a big thing is uh, eight of swords here is bravery, strength, and courage, which is represented by the lion showing up. Now the eight of swords can be about, you know, someone may feel a little bit trapped. Someone may feel helpless, hopeless, restricted. Uh, what I'm getting here for you, I feel like this individual or this energy that's stemming in uh, Scorpio season or November, they may feel stuck or left behind and uh, they feel a little bit hopeless and they're trying to, they're trying to maybe become a victim, like victim mentality, and they're trying to drag you down. And that's where Glinda comes in, the star, and says, uh-uh, you know your power. You know your strengths. Even though you're empathic. Now, your, your final card here is uh, the, the empath. And the empath is actually a bonus card in this amazing deck, one of my favorites. Check it out in the description box below. But it is card 23 of the Major Arcana. Now, there's only 21 Major Arcana, so the author created uh, a few extras, four extras. And the empath is someone who is very, of course, empathic, but someone who feels a lot. They are deeply compassionate for mankind, for others. They can be a strong healer. And by this, this could be you or it could be someone that you are connecting with. The empath is is or needs to set healthy emotional boundaries. Otherwise, you can take on other people's stuff. And I see that there could be this other person or this other energy that is trying to hit you in your weak spots, right? Or hit you. And this could even be, if this isn't dealing with another person, I mean, we do see a king and queen of swords, but if this is not another person, this could be, you know, a belief that you have that you may be very stubborn to let go of, right? To find that balance between the masculine and feminine within oneself. 
Now you can still be a healer without taking on other people's stuff. You can still go your own path without sacrificing your own integrity and your own happiness and your own freedom to make someone else happy, right? And I feel like you may have at times enabled someone to keep walking all over you or keep, you know, showing up in that behavior because there's a part of you that accepted it in some way, shape or form. And that's what you are wanting to, you know, put an end to and you're finding ways by asking, asking your guides, asking a therapist, asking, you know, your family for help. There's something here about, you know, how can I strengthen my boundaries? What do I need to do to make this happen? And when the empath shows up, you may have been emotionally exhausted, but what you're doing now is pr prioritizing yourself and your emotional well-being. That's what you need to do here. And I'm proud of you for doing it. Prioritizing your own self and your own emotional well-being. You can lead a horse to water Aquarius, but you can't make it drink. So as much as you want to help certain people or perhaps even those people that have betrayed you, right? Even those people who betrayed you, I feel like you still, there's still a part of you that, you know, wishes that they could be better, do better, think better. Um, try not to let yourself get caught up in the emotions of rage, resentment, anger, bitterness, right? Because sometimes you take on their emotions because even though we talk about you getting out of this cycle and you are not uh, being in that mirrored energy, if you get sucked back into it, you could be picking up and mirroring some energies of another individual. So you're empathic, but you don't have to take on their stuff. Whew. Aquarius, this is going to be a big three months for you, a big three months. So whatever is happening here, it's big. Okay, let's get a final outcome for December. December 2020. <laughs> yeah, you're putting an end to it. The death. I didn't even have to finish December 2024 and the death card came out. You're putting an end to the situation. This is massive transformation. It's a massive change, but it's liberation. Something may have been out of your control, right? You cannot, I'm going to repeat that, you cannot control the actions of another the only thing that you have control over is how you respond, how you react to situations around you. And I feel like something, someone may feel out of control here, but I feel like, oh yeah, that's why three of swords right behind it. But you're putting an end to it and you're saying, I'm not going to live in this pain. I'm not going to live in this betrayal, right? I'm done with it. And I feel like the death is moving on and embarking upon a new beginning. And it feels like it is a bit of a theme, but I see what is being unraveled for you or revealed in a big way is the start of a new life. And this new life has to do with happiness, right? You're tapping your darn heels or cowboy boots or whatever you're wearing, right? You're tapping those shoes and you're saying there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And you're gonna do what you need to get there. You're going to go through, you know, the yellow brick road and you're going to take some twists. You're going to take some turns and you're going to come up with some flying monkeys and some crazy witches and, you know, everything that life entails along the way. But I feel like you're on that last stretch. It's like you're waking up from the poppy fields and you have this, yeah, a big wake up call per se, right? Big wake up call and you're off on that final leg of the journey and something that has been emotionally draining you in some way, shape, or form is being rebalanced or those karmic scales are being reset. So big energy is coming in Aquarius. Let's take a look at messages from inspirational leaders that may be here or have crossed. We'll look at messages uh, from your guides, loved ones, or those in spirit. All right, what do we have please for Aquarius? <coughs> Aquarius, we have from your, your guides, your angels, your loved ones, you are never too small to make a difference. You are never too small to make a difference. Some of you may have said to yourself, well, what difference does it make, right? We've all heard that. We've probably all said that at one point. 
Sometimes it makes all the difference in the world. That one tiny small change, that one tiny small shift or one tiny small choice that you make changes your destiny. It helps you jump to a new timeline. And that's what I see as is happening here for you. So your guides are reminding you that every, every choice uh, regardless of how small or big something is, it does make a difference and you make a difference. Uh, next up from Edwin Elliot, Elliot, by being yourself, you put something wonderful in the world that was not there before. So this does represent, you know, your uniqueness, your individuality. The world needs you. The world needs your gifts. The world needs your light. You need your light. So don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. I see that dream coming in. Glinda, the good witch, is hovering right over you, constantly watching your move. You're protected and you are being divinely directed towards more happiness, Aquarius. Better believe it. Next we have, now, wow, we have a couple from, you know, your spiritual team. Now, a lot of these are quotes from leaders leaders uh, that have come before us, leaders that may still be alive, but you have a lot of blank ones, which says you have a lot of guides that are connecting with you and a lot of helpers in the spiritual realm. It says in seeking happiness for others, you will find it in yourself in seeking happiness for others. And that's where that empath card comes in. You are an empath. You want to help the world. You want to help your loved ones, right? You want to help in such big ways and small ways. All of it makes a difference, right? It's not, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is making a difference, but it's important that you, you set those emotional boundaries. You draw the, the line in the sand here and yes, seek out happiness for others, even if that means parting ways or letting them go in some way, shape or form, because only then will you find that for yourself. Next, we have Eleanor Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Remember that star energy that, that's showing up, hovering over your reading? That, that's your dreams, Aquarius. You are the star. You are your own wish granted by being here, right? The future belongs to you because you believe in your dream. And I feel like you are moving forward based on your strongest beliefs here. And last but not least, what makes you come alive? Remember what we said in the beginning about the sun, right? The sun is happiness, it's abundance, it's vitality, playfulness, warmth. It's like being outside on a, a beautiful summer day. You're laying in a hammock with a good book. Everything is bliss, right? That sun's beating down on you. You're warm. You hear the birds chirping and maybe the, the waves in the background. And you just have this feeling of contentment. You have a feeling of you know, love around you. Maybe you hear the children or grandchildren playing in the background. You smell the foods of the barbecue on the, the grill and you're just loving life. You're loving your surroundings. But I feel like what you're doing now is, you know, you're really asking yourself with the why, what makes me happy and what can contribute to creating more abundance and bliss, whatever that may be in your life. And I feel like you're doing it, right? It says, what makes you come alive? Do that. The world needs more people who have come alive. The world doesn't need more robots, more people who are stuck on default, more destruction, unkind behaviors, people hiding behind their computer screens, right? The world needs more compassion, love, kindness, generosity, compassion. And that is you. When you're showing up as the empath here, I mean, Aquarius, you are someone who is a dreamer, but you're not just a dreamer. You are a doer. And that's what I see you doing is you're doing it. You're a dreamer, you're a doer. And I feel like there's a, a huge shift and I'm getting that song. Not only is that song, Mama, I'm Coming Home showing up here, um, but there is something here about a dream or dream could be in the title of a song because I'm hearing... I, I feel like I've heard the song before, but I'm asking spirit, spirit, what are the lyrics? 
You're not the only one. Something about being a dreamer, you're not the only one. Okay, I'm not quite sure who sings it. I feel like it is a male voice coming in here. Maybe the song is titled Dreamer. I'm not sure. Um, take it as it resonates. Maybe dream shows up for you on, you know, a shirt or on uh, a platform. Or it could be showing up in your own dreams. Pay attention to your dreams here, Aquarius. There could be a lot of insight and a lot of, I'm getting, um, I'm getting healing through the dreams or healing through your sleep state as well. So for those of you that have felt a little bit restless or you haven't been able to sleep very well or you've struggled with sleep, I'm getting uh, either restless leg syndrome, sleep apnea, maybe there has been some sort of anxiety or you've woken up many different times. Just be mindful of uh, your dream state. Maybe keep a little pad of paper next to your bed. Uh, jot it down, hand like if you can with your pen and paper instead of just speaking it into your phone because there's something that can jog up the memory even more about writing it down in the physical and uh, it's, it's powerful. So trust in the power of your dreams. That is what I have for you, Aquarius. You have everything you need to succeed in life. You are doing it. You're already doing it, but just trust that when one door opens, or excuse me, when one door closes, another opens, and I see 2025 really bringing in this energy of the sun. So thank you for being here. If the reading resonates, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell if you haven't already. And thank you again so very much for tuning into this frequency and this channel. Lots of love.